So let's take a look now at the experiment. Here's one of my favorite experiments in quantum optics by the Nobel Prize winner group of Serge Arroche in Paris uh, at the Collège de France. And he, they used Rydberg atoms in a cavity interacting with a single mode radiation field of light, actually of a microwave field in that, their case, to measure vacuum Rabi oscillations and these collapse and revivals in the James Cummings model. So here's a very simple setup out of the original paper that we've also linked for you in the Coursera pages. So here's the manuscript, a photo taken directly out of that manuscript. We have the oven chamber, which we basically just heat up an atomic gas, so it evaporates, it emerges from this oven. And then we have some state preparation zone B, where we prepare our two-level atom in the ground state of the two levels. And in fact, the levels they've been using here have been so-called Rydberg states, highly excited states in an atom, where they isolate two of those states. So they really make a perfect two-level atom, and this whole box B is just there to prepare the atoms in a ground state of this Rydberg state. And then they have these two mirrors between the light field bouncing back and forth between those two mirrors with a very small separation. And uh, this creates a very strong coupling for just a single mode of the radiation field. And we'll discuss that more in the next lectures. So this is basically now the atom flying through this interaction zone, interacting with this single mode of the radiation field. And then there's the detection zone where, we, where they can detect whether the atom is in the ground state of the two-level atom or in the excited state. And they do that in a clever way. This is electric field plates. This is a channel tron detector. These electric field plates apply an electric field which strips off the electron from the atom, but only when it's in the excited state. And it's in the ground state of the two-level atom, then this field is not strong enough to strip the electron off the atom. So now when this electron can be multiplied and a current can be detected in this detector, we know that the atom was in the excited state. Okay, that's it. So you just have this atom flying through the cavity here, this two-level atom interacting with a single mode of the radiation field and here we can measure whether the atom is in the ground or in the excited state. And here's what they measured in their experiments. So first of all let's take a look at how the vacuum field interacts with the atom emerging into the cavity in the excited state. So you start with the atom in the excited state, it flies through the cavity and there's just no photon in the cavity and in the classical treatment you would indeed expect nothing to happen to that atom. But here you see indeed in the experimental results, you see that you do get Rabi oscillations at a single frequency. So this is the population of the atom being in the ground state. You start in the excited state, so the ground state population is zero. The atom goes into the ground state by emitting a photon into the cavity. So now we have the atom in the ground state, one photon in the cavity then the atom absorbs that photon again, goes back to the ground state, and so forth. And you know, because life is not perfect in experiments, you have some damping that ideally you would not, not have for the situation we discussed in the theoretical part. Now you can Fourier transform this signal to just see what frequencies do you have in the signal. Well, you can already see this is just basically almost a pure, perfect, cosinusoidal oscillation and therefore you just expect one frequency component. So this is one frequency component, component around 50 kilohertz and that is the vacuum Rabi frequency omega zero that they have directly measured in the system. And by just taking the strength, the population of um, weight in that spectral weight in that frequency component, we can also know those are the number of photons with n equals zero so the vacuum state probability in our system, and you see this is plotted here. So there's a vacuum state probability close to one that they measured by this vacuum Rabi oscillations. Now they can connect a signal generator, a microwave signal generator to this resonator, to this cavity, which allows us to inject classical fields into the cavity, very, very weak classical fields into the cavity. So we now have coherent states in the cavity and we can repeat the same experiment. Now you see what you get for different average photon numbers in your coherent state, 0.4 photons, 0.85 photons, and 1.77 photons here in the system. And you can indeed see that you see, you start to see the Rabi oscillations and they seem to collapse and revive again. You can better see it here in the C there's some 
Rabi oscillation initially, a collapse and a revival. So the separation between collapse and revival, of course, for these small n bars becomes smaller and smaller. Remember, the revival time was proportional to square root of n bar, so it's not as large as in the case I showed you before for n bar equal 20. But clearly you can see that you have these initial Rabi oscillations, collapse, and a later revival again in the system. And again, because there's a little bit of damping in the experiment, uh, we see that on top of the perfect evolution that we would expect in theory. But now again, we can just Fourier transform these signals to get the different spectral weights. And you can see the different underlying frequencies that we have in here just give us these different frequencies at the vacuum Rabi frequency here, omega zero, at square root of 2 times the vacuum Rabi frequency, square root of 3 times the vacuum Rabi frequency, square root of 4 times the vacuum Rabi frequency, and so forth. So this, and the height, the spectral weight of each of those components tells us the probability of having zero photons, probability of having one photon in the system, probability of having two photons in the system, three photons, and so forth. So we can just take this spectral weight plot it here as a probability, as a measured probability for having n photons in the system, and you can indeed see that it beautifully follows these Poissonian distributions that, we are, that they fitted to these experimental data points with this solid line. So the solid line is a Poissonian distribution function, the circles are measured data points from these Fourier transforms, and you can indeed see that you beautifully recover the coherent state Poissonian probability distribution. So this is really an amazing experiment directly showing you the field quantization through these quantized Rabi frequencies that occur in the system and through the weight of the spectral component at a certain quantized Rabi frequency, the experimentalists are able to detect how many, what the probability was to have n photons in the system and reconstruct the underlying probability distribution of the photon state. So this is really one of my favorites in quantum mechanics this collapse and revival and the vacuum Rabi oscillations where you can really see that the single atom can interact with a single mode radiation field even with a vacuum field and introduce some dynamics in the system. That's all what I wanted to tell you today about this great experiment uh, in quantum optics uh, and uh, we're going to see now in the next classes much more how we can realize these cavity quantum electrodynamics experiments, how we can make small resonators out of mirrors that allow us to probe the interaction of a single atom with a single mode radiation field, even for optical frequencies, and then see what we can get under those circumstances. Thanks a lot for watching today. See you in the next class.